Scarlowy storms through. In the summer, the high hills of Sodor are Scarlowy's favourite place. There are flowers and forests and fields full of sheep and farmers who wave as Scarlowy chuffs by. But in the winter, it's very different in the hills. There is rain and wind and sometimes there are bad storms. One rainy day, Scarlowy was delivering trucks of slate. He saw a farmer up ahead by the tracks. There's an emergency, he shouted. A big storm is coming. We have to get the sheep down from the hills. We need the engines to help. Scarlowy wanted to help, so he puffed quickly away to the depot. He had to tell the other engines that there was an emergency. When Scarlowy arrived at the depot, his friends Reneus and Peter Sam were there. So was the thin controller. Scarlowy told him about the storm. First, you must collect the trucks and take them to the top of the hill, he said. Then pick up the sheep and bring them safely down the hill to the farmers. Yes, sir. Peep Reneus and Peter Sam, they couldn't wait to get started. As Scarlowy was being uncoupled from the slate trucks, there was a flash of lightning and a roar of thunder. Scarlowy was scared of the thunder and lightning, but he didn't want to tell his friends. He didn't want to look silly. Reneus and Peter Sam blew their whistles bravely as they puffed off to collect their trucks. Scarlowy tooted his whistle as hard as he could, but it didn't sound very brave at all. The three little engines arrived at the bottom of the hill with their trucks. Then there was an even louder roar of thunder. Scarlowy's wheels wobbled. He was very frightened. Here I go, puffed Reneus, and bravely he chuffed up the hill. I'm coming too, tooted Peter Sam, and he puffed off bravely after his friend. Scarlowy watched his friends disappear into the storm. He didn't feel as brave as the other engines. I'm too scared to go up the hill with them, Scarlowy puffed quietly, and with a sad puff of steam, Scarlowy reversed down a siding and hid. Scarlowy waited. He hoped no one would see he wasn't helping. At last, Reneus and Peter Sam came down the hill. Their wagons were full of sheep. Scarlowy watched the farmers unload the sheep. Then, Peter Sam and Reneus puffed back up the hill into the storm. They were being very brave. Scarlowy felt bad. He wanted to help, but he was too scared. Peter, Sam and Reneus worked very hard. They puffed up and down the hill, bringing sheep safely to the farmers. Then there was trouble. Peter, Sam and Reneus had puffed up and down so many times, they both ran out of coal. There are still more sheep on the hill, wished Reneus sadly. What are we going to do? chuffed Peter Sam. Scarlowy looked at his two friends. They were very tired and very sad. Then he looked at the farmers. They were worried about the sheep. If a big engine like me is frightened of thunder, the little sheep must be very scared, Scarlowy chuffed to himself. I wanted to help the sheep, I wanted to help the farmers, and I wanted to help my friends. But I haven't helped any of them. I've let them all down. He felt terrible. Scarlowy puffed slowly out of his hiding place. Reneus and Peter Sam were pleased to see him. Did you collect lots of sheep? Peter Sam asked. We didn't see you, puffed Reneus. Scarlowy sadly told them what had happened. 
I was too scared of the thunder and lightning to go up the hill with you, he wished, so I hid and I watched you working. Because of me there are still sheep on the hill, so now I'm going up to collect them, he chuffed. There was another flash of lightning and a roar of thunder, but Scarlowy didn't notice. He pumped his pistons and puffed off bravely up the hill. The lightning flashed around Scarlowy and the thunder roared, but Scarlowy wasn't scared. All he thought about was collecting the sheep and bringing them safely down the hill. Scarlowy arrived at the top of the hill. The farmer was waiting. He was very pleased to see Scarlowy. The sheep were quickly loaded into the trucks and Scarlowy set off down the hill. It was very hard work, but Scarlowy didn't give up. He chuffed up and down the hill until he had collected all the sheep. Scarlowy felt very happy. I'm braver than I thought, he wished, and he puffed proudly down the hill for the last time. Reneus and Peter Sam were waiting for Scarlowy at the bottom of the hill. Well done, they tooted. They were very happy to see him and proud of their friend. Three cheers for Scarlowy, the farmers cheered. Scarlowy smiled. I didn't think I could do it, but I could. The lightning still flashed and the thunder still roared. But Scarlowy was the happiest engine on Sodor. Thomas set sail. It was a blustery, buffety day on the island of Sodor. Edward's coal trucks creaked and cranked against the wind. Percy's mail trucks shuttled and shivered, but Thomas hardly noticed the wind at all. He puffed into Brendam docks. The mayor of Sodor had ordered a brand new sailing boat. I am to take the sailing boat to the launch party, tooted Thomas excitedly. The mayor, the fat controller and Lady Hat will all see the boat go into the sea for the very first time. The boat had a tall mast and was painted bright red. It's wonderful, gasped Thomas. It's red. I should be taking it, huffed James. It's heavy. I should be taking it, wished Gordon. Cranky lowered the sailing boat onto Thomas's flatbed. It's not too heavy for me, tooted Thomas. You must wait for the engineer to lower the mast, snapped Cranky. The masts will be no trouble for me, Thomas whistled, and he raced away. Thomas puffed proudly along. The wind was strong and the boat was heavy, but not too heavy for Thomas. Thomas came to a steep hill. He chuffed hard, pulling the heavy boat. I can do it, I can do it, he puffed. And soon he reached the top. Hoorah, Thomas tooted. I did it. He felt very pleased, and he steamed on. Then Thomas met Emily. Look at my sailing boat, Emily, Thomas tooted. Don't you look grand, wished Emily, and Thomas knew he did. Thomas felt very grand as he steamed past Elizabeth. Be careful with that tall boat, she hooted. It's a very blustery day. But Thomas felt far too important to take any notice. Next, Thomas puffed towards a low bridge. Rosie was waiting at the signal. Watch out, Thomas, whistled Rosie sharply. Thomas applied his brakes and stopped. 
just in time. The mast is too tall to go under the bridge, puffed Rosie. Then I shall take another track, puffed Thomas. Thomas chuffed proudly on. Then there was trouble. He heard a loud crunch. Thomas looked up. Oh no, cried Thomas. The tall mast must have caught in the trees. Thomas couldn't move forwards or backwards. So he huffed and he chuffed. And with a mighty puff, Thomas broke free. Hooray, tooted Thomas. But Thomas didn't know the ropes holding the sails had untied. Thomas was feeling very grand now. The wind was strong. It was blowing him along. Whee! Thomas cried happily. He was going faster and faster. The wind grew stronger. Thomas raced around a bend. Be careful, Thomas, Molly tooted. The wind is filling the boat's sails. But Thomas wished by so quickly, he didn't hear her. The mayor, the fat controller and Lady Hack were waiting at the harbour. They could see Thomas racing towards them. Slow down, Thomas, boomed the fat controller. But Thomas couldn't slow down. Thomas whooshed past and raced away from them. Faster and faster, around a bend in the track. Suddenly the wind dropped and Thomas stopped. If the wind picks up again, I'll never be able to stop at the harbour, he cried. The boat will not be launched and the mare and the fat controller will be very cross. Thomas knew then that he had been wrong not to wait for the engineer at the docks. I must chuff back to the docks as quickly as I can and I must bring the engineer to lower the masts, he tooted. Thomas was uncoupled from the flatbed and he steamed off. Thomas's wheels whirred to a stop at the docks. Has the engineer arrived, Salty? puffed Thomas. Oh, yes, me hearty, smiled Salty. Thomas was very relieved. The engineer climbed quickly into Thomas's cab and Thomas steamed off. Soon, Thomas arrived at the sailing boat. The engineer rolled the sails and lowered the masts. Slowly, Thomas chuffed back to the harbour. The boat was heavy. Thomas had to puff hard. This time, the wind couldn't help him. The mayor, the fat controller and Lady Hat were still waiting. They were happy to see Thomas and they were happy to see the mayor's sailing boat. Thomas, I see you have decided that full steam is better than full sail. Yes, sir, tooted Thomas. And as he watched the boat slide into the water, Thomas was very proud to be really useful. Gordon and the Engineer There are railway lines all over the island of Sodor. The railway runs from Brendam Docks right across the countryside. So there are lots of signals. They help the engines to stay safe as they go about their work. All the engines have favorite jobs. Gordon loves pulling the express. Gordon thinks it's the most important job on the island. And Gordon likes to feel important. 
One morning, the fat controller came to see Gordon. Gordon, the points are broken, said the fat controller. An imported engineer is coming to fix them. You are to collect them at Marin Station. Then you must take them to the points as quickly as possible. Don't worry, sir, chuffed Gordon. I'll get them to the points for you. Gordon steamed to Marin. All the other engines were stuck. They couldn't go anywhere until the points were fixed. They all had to wait as Gordon puffed grandly along the express line. I'm an important engine collecting an important passenger, he puffed proudly. Gordon felt very grand. Gordon pulled in to Marin Station. There was a passenger carrying a toolbox waiting on the platform. He must be the important engineer, thought Gordon. All aboard, he whistled, and the man with the toolbox climbed on board. Wait, said the station master. Bertie the bus is bringing more passengers. I can't wait, Gordon huffed. I have a very important passenger on board. I have to leave now. And he left. Gordon puffed proudly along. But he didn't know that the man with the toolbox wasn't the engineer. Or that Bertie the bus had brought the engineer with all the other passengers. Oh no, groaned the engineer. I've missed my train. How will I ever fix the points now? Gordon rattled past Donald. Then he clattered past Douglas. Important engine coming through, chuffed Gordon. This made Douglas very cross. But the man with the toolbox was having a wonderful time. He was the only passenger and he didn't have to stop at any of the stations. At last, Gordon arrived at the broken points. I'm glad you're here, puffed Thomas. None of the engines can move until the points are fixed. But the man with the toolbox was very confused. I'm not an engineer, said the man. I'm a carpenter. I thought Gordon was taking me to the docks. Oh, no, I've left the engineer behind, moaned Gordon. I'll have to go back and get him. But you can't reverse down the express line with the express, said the signalman. Maybe you could go on my line, puffed Thomas. That's a good idea, puffed Gordon. Thank you, Thomas. So Gordon backed down the line and left his express coaches. Then he steamed on to Thomas's track. He reversed quickly down Thomas's line. But he found Douglas blocking his way. Out of my way, huffed Gordon. I've got an important passenger to collect. You can't get past, puffed Douglas. I can only go back as far as the next station, then Donald is in the way. Gordon felt terrible. All the engines were stuck and it was all his fault. How can I collect the engineer? He puffed. Then Gordon had an idea. Maybe all the engines can help, he thought. Gordon told Douglas his idea. Then Douglas puffed down the track to tell Donald. What a grand plan, chuffed Donald. So Donald puffed back to collect the engineer. The engineer climbed on board.
Then Donald chuffed back up the line. Donald dropped the engineer off at the station. Then Douglas took the engineer to the next stop, where Gordon was waiting for him. Finally, Gordon took the engineer to the broken points. The points were soon fixed, and the engines could puff through. Thank you, Gordon," puffed Thomas. That evening, the railway was back to normal. Thank you for helping me today," puffed Gordon. Even an important engine like me needs help sometimes. Hide and peep. Brendam Docks is a busy, bustling place. There are platforms, tracks, and sidings. And lots and lots of big warehouses. Everyone enjoys working at Brendam Docks. One day, Thomas, Percy, and Cranky were all waiting for an important cargo ship to arrive. Cranky could see that the ship was far away on the horizon. The ship will be late, he told Thomas and Percy. Thomas had an idea. Let's play a game while we wait. He puffed cheerfully. What shall we play? Peeped Percy excitedly. Hide and peep, tooted Thomas. It was his favourite game. You go and hide, Percy, and when I find you, I will peep loudly. You'll never find me, puffed Percy. I'm the best hider ever. Well, I'm the best finder, boasted Thomas. Cranky looked down at the little tank engines. Can I play? He asked. You're much too tall to hide. Thomas laughed. Cranky felt left out, so Percy puffed away to hide. Soon, Thomas steamed off to find his friend. Thomas puffed past platforms, steamed by sidings, and wished alongside warehouses. But Percy was very good at hiding. Thomas couldn't find him anywhere. Thomas puffed into a large warehouse. He thought Percy might be hiding there. When he got inside, he couldn't see him. Suddenly, an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. He decided he would play a trick. Thomas pretended he knew where Percy was hiding, even though he didn't. Found you! Peeped Thomas loudly. Then he looked all around to see where Percy was hiding. Percy puffed out of his hiding place. Percy could see that Thomas hadn't really found him at all. Percy whistled loudly. Thomas was surprised. "You tricked me!" Percy puffed crossly. "You didn't know where I was at all." Thomas felt silly. "I'm sorry," he wished. I lied again," huffed Percy. "But no more tricks." And he chuffed quickly away. Thomas waited. Then he steamed off to look for Percy again. But Percy was very good at hiding, and Thomas couldn't find him anywhere. Bother," huffed Thomas. Suddenly, another idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I'll pretend that the fat controller has arrived. Percy tooted Thomas loudly. The fat controller's here, but the fat controller wasn't really there at all. Suddenly, there was a loud noise. Percy had been hiding at the top of the coal hopper. Thomas was surprised. Bosh my boiler! Puffed Percy. Where is he, Thomas? But Percy couldn't see the fat controller anywhere. Found you, peeped Thomas cheekily. Percy saw that Thomas had tricked him again. That's not fair, he wished. I'm sorry, Thomas chuffed. Hide again. This time I won't trick you. 
So Percy puffed away to hide again. Thomas waited. Then he started to look for his friend. Thomas still couldn't find him, but he did find the dock manager. The dock manager was also looking for Percy and for Thomas. The ship is docked and Cranky is unloading the cargo. You must come and collect your deliveries, he told Thomas. Thomas peeped loudly for Percy. Percy, the ship has docked, he tooted. Percy heard Thomas, but he thought it was another trick, so Percy decided to stay hidden. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas. Percy thinks I'm playing another trick. Percy would be in trouble if he didn't collect his cargo trucks. If only I hadn't tricked Percy before, tooted Thomas. He raced over to Cranky. Where's Percy? Cranked Cranky crankily. Percy is still hiding. I'm not a very good finder after all, Thomas wished sadly. And I'm too tall to be a good hider, creaked Cranky. Thomas remembered that Cranky was so tall he had seen the cargo ship far out at sea. But you'd be a very good finder, tooted Thomas. Thomas asked Cranky to see if he could find where Percy was hiding. Or Percy will get into trouble, puffed Thomas. Cranky didn't want the little engines to get into trouble. Cranky looked easily over warehouses, across platforms and down onto sidings. And there he saw Percy. I found him, crank Cranky proudly. Thomas raced over to Rocky. Found you, Percy, he peeped loudly. Rattle my rods, puffed Percy. He was very surprised. You were the best finder after all. No, I'm not, Thomas puffed sadly. I had to ask Cranky to find you. He's so tall he could see where you were hiding. You tricked me again, huffed Percy. Before Percy could get cross, Thomas told him about the waiting cargo trucks. It's time for our deliveries, Thomas whistled. We must hurry. Together, Percy and Thomas steamed back to their cargo trucks. Percy was happy his friend had found him. Soon they were ready to leave. Thank you, Cranky, Thomas chuffed loudly. You are the best finder. Cranky was very pleased. And Percy, Thomas puffed to his friend, you are the best hider ever. And the two friends steamed happily away. <laughs>